Ja, hello and welcome. My name is Matthias from marmoworld.com and in this After Effects tutorial I show you how to create the following effect. Hello, I'm Andra from marmoworld.com and today I show you just a moment, that's my boy. Hallo Schatz! Ja, hallo Schatz, und wie sieht's aus? Was ist hey, denn voll Team? cool! Schau dir mal an, den kann ich drehen und auseinanderziehen so und ziemlich ja. wahr ich... Ups. Okay, so to get started we take our background footage and drag it into a new composition and obviously what we need to do here is now to do some tracking. Yeah, and we do this tracking with Mocha and since we are using Mocha import we are marking the areas that we want to track using masks. So I take here the mask tool and draw here a rough mask around the area that I want to track. And note that I do not just choose the fingers but also some part around them. Yeah, This is because the border where the, the between the hand and the background is something that is very good to track. Yeah, So I want to include this but I don't want to include too much of this because then the danger is that the track sticks uh, to the background and not to the hand. Yeah? So I think this is a pretty good tracking area. Let's call this here where is a mask? M mask. So left hand and I set this masks mode to none and now scroll here. Uh, by the way you can move if you keep the spacebar pressed and choose another time the mask and draw here roughly a shape around this. Okay, like this. And now I set here the mask mode to none and now we want to track these two. So this is the right hand in Mocha, so we choose Window Mocha Import Plus and Mocha Import Plus is a tool from Marmo World that makes tracking in Mocha if you use After Effects much much easier. So what you can do with it is just select this layer here and click on Track in Mocha and now it asks you, okay, it has detected these two masks and which of these masks should go on which layer. Yeah, We should we could say something like we put both masks on one layer only. Yeah, This would mean Mocha would track these two masks as one joint object. Yeah? And this is no good idea because these two hands really move independently. Yeah? So in other words, if you have here your two hands and you do moves like this, yeah, you want your layer basically to scale. And but the problem is your hands really don't scale. Yeah, They stay as they are and this will irritate Mocha. So we have to track first the one hand and then the second hand completely independent. And we do this by just selecting here independent layers and clicking OK. Now Mocha is opened and uh, it has already created here two layers for us. Yeah, layer one and layer two. Let's quickly call this here uh, left track and this here right track. And now you can see that Mocha doesn't start at the frame where we've drawn the masks, so we need to go to this frame. Yeah, And it seems like this is a good frame where the mask fits. Yeah? And now we simply start tracking by clicking on track forwards. And you can see that actually both masks are tracked and this is because both these layers have enabled this tracking symbol. So any layers that have this tracking symbol here, this uh, yeah, enabled, will track simultaneously but independent. Yeah, you can see when the fingers move out or in, the masks are not scaled or something like this. And you can see that it pretty robustly tracks this footage here. Let me just jump ahead in time. Now the track comes to an end. Here, of course, the track doesn't work anymore, so I click stop to discontinue tracking. And now I go to the beginning of the area where the track started. Yeah. If you select this layer, you will see where this is. So here the tracking stopped and then I click on this icon here, track backwards to track the remaining part in the other direction. Again here now the track doesn't 
work anymore of course because the hands are disappearing but this is okay we only need the track until here okay now how do we get this corner pin surface uh, inside where the screen will be placed yeah you can click on this symbol here and then you get this blue surface let me just look for a nice point in time here where our screen has a nice size and now you can just put this surface here and maybe like this by the way you can zoom in by clicking the Z on the keyboard and moving in here like this uh, and then I can give this screen here a nice shape that I want to have and now we have one problem and this one problem is that we tracked both these layers independently and we had to because the, ha the hands moved independently. Yeah, this means if I choose the other track here, it unfortunately also has an independent corner pin. Yeah. So I set both of these corner pins, so both of these surface rectangles here, to be roughly the same. Let me double check clicking on this one and clicking on this one. Yeah, it's uh, maybe this one here is a bit higher, so I can just keep this here and drag it down. And now these two look not exactly identical, but similar enough. And now what I do is I export both of them. Yeah, you can see now one of them is moving with this hand, and the other one is moving with the other hand. And what I finally want to do is to take these two points from this track and these two points from the second track. And since I need both of them, I export them both. So I select first the left track, go to export tracking data, choose here the corner pin only because this supports red giant warp, which we want to use in this case, yeah, and click on save. And then I choose here something like, like left track and let's call it also CP for corner pin. And then I go to right track export tracking data. Oh, I hope you can see this in the recording, so let me move this up here a bit. Uh, here you have export tracking data, and then again the warp support, save, and say here right track CP. Okay, now we go back to After Effects, and in After Effects, in Mocha Import, we say load, and choose the tracking data left track that we just uh, had uh, exported. Select this layer here and say because it asks which clip did you track. Yes, I tracked this plate layer here. Okay, this is something that Mocha Import needs to know in order to uh, understand your tracking data. Yeah. And now we create a new layer. We go to layer, new, solid. Unfortunately, you cannot see this here anymore. Uh, and then we say make comp size. This is important that it has the full size of the composition and say this here is a uh, corner pin left apply and then we double duplicate this control D and call the second one corner pin right and now we loaded the corner pin data for the left one yeah so we click here and choose here the corner pin function and apply and now it asks me which corner pin do I want to use. If you don't have this uh, red giant warp plugin installed, you can choose uh, one of the two built-in After Effects corner pins, but in this case we want to have the red giant one, which has some more advanced options like built-in motion blur, for example. And we click on OK. And now you can see here, if I solo this layer, that this is now perfectly following uh, our first track. Uh, and then we select the second layer, we go again on load, right track, and now it asked me again which clip did you track? Yeah, we didn't track this white uh, solid here, but we actually tracked the plate. So we select the plate and click OK. Now it knows how to handle the tracking data, and I select this one, so the where I want to apply the tracking data, go to apply, Again, use the red giant warp and click OK. If we now look, we have two solids, one following the one hand and one following the second hand. Yeah? And now we need to combine these two. And for this, we create a third solid. Again, layer, new, solid. 
and call maybe let's make this one another color to distinguish it maybe black yeah and call this uh, screen and now we want to copy the corner pin from the right to the screen yeah so we click here e to reveal the effect select the effect go control c and go here and say control v now we have on the black one also these pins but then we go to the left one and here you can see we have these uh, keys yeah i can also reveal them clicking u which reveals all properties with keyframes and from this one we want now replace from this one again i click u to reveal the four corners um, let me make here some more space we want to replace the left corners yeah? so upper left i go here control c and here upper left control v and you can see it updates to to this one here yeah and make sure you are at the first frame actually when doing this copying and then we go here a uh, lower left control c and here lower left control v and if you now look closely we can see we have now a black screen that is following in one half this one track and in one half this other track now we can delete these two layers here since we don't need them anymore i like to keep my original tracking data always just for safety in case i need it later so i just make these layers invisible and i also make them shy and click here such that they don't pollute my timeline anymore okay now i go to this screen layer and say edit sorry layer pre-compose yeah it's the last option here unfortunately not visible in the recording and then i say leave all attributes in this comp uh, click ok and now if i double click here i get a new composition with the content of my screen that is currently completely black so now i can very easily just drag here into this composition my background image which is just a screen capture from my skype so i can scale this down to fit maybe move it a bit up and scale it a bit oh no no keyframing i wanted to do this here to keyframe the two dimensions independently to scale them independently uh, maybe like this and here like that okay and now i also drag in some webcam footage that i've shot for this and move it here in place and s scale it down a bit and place it here okay now let's see how this is looking like uh, of course here the screen should disappear so let me go exactly to the point in time here probably it should disappear so i set here the out point of the layer and where should the screen appear uh, maybe around here uh, so i set here the in point and now i can see in between we have this nice screen we can make it a bit transparent clicking t and reducing here the opacity maybe like this and now of course this doesn't look too realistic yet yeah because it somehow doesn't integrate so nice in the shot so what you now see is a series of tricks that makes this look more realistic. I think many people are able to create such a corner pin, but often it doesn't look really believable. And this is because of many little details. So you have to do a few tricks to really integrate this nicely. And the first thing is that here in this case, we want these fingers be probably to be in front of the screen. Yeah? So this corner here, for example, should be hidden. And what we want to do for this is we drag in a copy of our background plate and now we want to have masks on these copies that just have here the fingers and everything else is invisible yeah such that these fingers are in front of the screen so we can call this here fingers and uh, this is a lot of rotoscoping work of course but the good news is with mocha this is much easier than you probably expect 
Uh, if you think of other options, you could also have the idea to try some color keying here to extract the fingers from the background. This is particularly difficult because these fingers here should actually be not in front of the screen, but only these fingers here. Yeah? So therefore, rotoscoping is here a much better idea. You could also think of using the roto brush for this, but I show you how to do it with Mocha because we've tracked these fingers already. So rotoscoping them is now very easy. So uh, just to see how this is working. I'm going back to Mocha and we have already our two layers here, left track and right track. So we don't need to track again. And I select this here to create a new layer. Maybe let's me even make these here invisible and don't track them again. Click Z to zoom in. And then I draw here a roto shape around these fingers. This time much more precise than the first time where we did it for tracking. So it's always good to separate these two tasks to first track and then do rotoscoping afterwards. The backside is not so important here yeah, because um, I also don't want to see this here because only here it will overlap with the uh, um, uh, with, with screen. So let me rename this here and say this is right roto and we link it of course to the right track. And now you can see as by magic this uh, mask follows the track from the other layer. And now you can fine tune the movement or the, the mask actually so you can see here it doesn't fit perfectly anymore. So we can simply go here and adjust it. And you can see here now you have markers for the keyframes that you've set. Yeah. So um, let me just move over here a bit and select our regular tool again. So now you can start fine-tuning your, your roto with more as or as many keyframes as you need, but you will notice that you actually need quite a few keyframes to make this look good. Yeah? So tracking this or uh, rotoscoping this in After Effects would have been much more work. And here you can see you get a pretty good result already with uh, three keyframes for this region here. Um, but now to make this a bit shorter, let me just jump ahead to a project where I have these rotos already done. So here I've now finished rotoscoping both these hands and make sure that both the rotos are visible and that the other layers are not visible. And then you can go to export shape data, choose this mocha shape data here and say all visible layers. This makes both this mask and the other mask here being exported and then I say copy to clipboard. And now back in After Effects make sure to go to the very first frame and then say edit paste mocha mask. So this is the last entry here in the edit menu also you cannot although you cannot see it paste and now you see we have here two masks roto right and roto left on this very layer. Yeah. And now you can see that they perfectly put the hands in front of the screen. So this means this is how it's looking with the hands and this is how it's looking without them. And it's just a detail but it makes it look much more integrated and much more realistic. Now we can trim this hands layer to only cover the area where the screen is visible. Yeah, so I adjust here the start and the end point. And now we have already a pretty nice looking screen. Okay, that's it for the first part of this tutorial. I think you have learned a lot about rotoscoping and tracking in Mocha. And in the second part, we will make this here much more realistic with a few additional tricks that make this screen and the background integrate even better. So one thing you will learn is how to add a reflection here on the screen that uh, makes it make more realistic. A second thing is we learn how to destroy the screen at the end with this shatter and also how we make it appear. And also we do some color correction with magic bullet looks. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this first part and join in again for the second. Just a moment, that's my book. Hallo Schatz! Ja, hallo Schatz! Und wie sieht's aus? Was ist hey, denn voll Spiel? cool! Schau dir mal an, den kann ich drehen und auseinanderziehen ja, und ziemlich wahr ist... Ups!